One of the greatest British pastimes and in a way, a bonding exercise between strangers is communal moaning. Chances are you've participated in such an act, and the most popular debate is discussing the lateness of public transport, buses specifically. It's common ground between two strangers waiting at a bus stop, and the brunt of the blame goes to the driver of said bus, but why not take a chance on the other end of the argument and see how difficult it is to be a bus driver? Excalibur Publishing brings us Bus and Cable Car San Francisco, a standalone PC game. It's essentially a bus driver simulator, and if you're thinking about just hopping in and picking it up straight away, well that's not going to happen. I've played a few simulators, but nothing as in-depth as this. You have your handbrakes, your gears, and most importantly, you have a wide range of different controls that affect the ventilation, the bus doors, the computer that sets the route, and of course charging people for the journey. They've kept it very rich in content, and while at the beginning you'll struggle to get the vehicles to act how you want, it really does add a great sense of achievement when you begin to merge it all together into a fluid motion. As the game starts out, you'll be in a particularly dingy apartment. I'm unsure if this is representative of the actual pay bracket of the regular San Franciscan bus driver, but it doesn't look very appealing. Fortunately, your character wants to make it big in the world of public transport and will be earning enough money to invest in new vehicles and even the new apartment. You have to complete bus routes and also specific missions that don't always involve a bus. For example, you could be driving a van to fix a broken down bus's fan belt, or you could be searching an old lighthouse with a torch. It does add a little bit extra to the game. One of the interesting aspects of the title is the reward scheme. As a real driver, any acts of danger are reported on your driver's license. This game does the same kind of thing. That means that if you crash, or go through a red light, or go across a motorway in the wrong direction, it's considered a negative reward, and you may have to pay a penalty fee. However, it works both ways, and you can get positive rewards as well. Now, they act as though they are similar to an achievement system, but they serve a greater purpose. If you complete various rewards, you may be able to exchange them for new vehicles. Of course, you can use money to pay for the vehicles, but as you may imagine, they are very expensive, so it's in your best interest to unlock the vehicles by completing rewards. Many of the vehicles differ in size and in their intended duties. For example, a corner would be much more difficult to combat in a long bus than one of the smaller pickup trucks. Turning a corner sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Well, Technically, you have to work on angles and prepare to return the reel once you're midway through a corner. This works pretty much like in real life. I mean, that's the intention of the game. If you want simulation, then you've come to the right place. One of the important parts of the game is the location, and it's incredible that they've managed to fit such a large map into the game. It will take you hours to see everything the map has to offer. This means that the amount of routes available are pretty high, and total over 40 different bus routes that you can complete. If you are looking for a new bus simulator, then Excalibur Publishing have delivered. The addition of cable cars and completing other jobs adds an extra level to what would be a perfectly fine game if sold exclusively as a bus simulator. It takes place on a huge map, the graphics look great, and you can play the game however you want. If you don't feel like doing a bus route, don't do it. If you want to just cruise around clocking up high speeds, go ahead. It's this feeling of freedom mixed with a high level of optional objectives that make this game shine.